I was born and raised in Chicago. I began playing music for my parents and their friends at age eight. I pulled records from my stepfather's collection, which hit a wide range of genres. And as I was privileged enough to play my grandmother's 45s, she collected during her lifetime. These experiences led me to building my own vinyl collection. I hit the record stores every weekend, and by the time my teenage years creeped up, I blasted into the underground house music scene, partying at places like Medusa's, Alcatraz, and other loft parties in Chicago. In the late 90s, I established a magazine, Please Listen to My Demo, which featured a boutique local hip hop artist. And in the mid-2000s, I began doing a segment from Chicago House Radio called The D Dis. I gained popularity with the show and soon after launched an independent online show, Nice Night for a Jam in 2007. The show originally broadcasted on stickjam.com and now finds its home on livestream.com, streaming live every Friday at 6 p.m. for Live 247. I can continue to break barriers and overcome boundaries, play dance music to rock, and inspire your soul. No show sure love, Brian. Yeah! Charles Charles started uh, his DJ career in Chicago in 1984 and spent many years learning from his longtime friend and mentor, the late Grammy Award winner Frankie Knuckles. Since 1984, Charles has held more than 25 club residencies and has performed as a DJ at more than 100 clubs and events in Chicago, New York, Detroit, Toronto, and Miami including the edge of the looking glass and sidecar cafe in Chicago. Charles is also an ASCAP songwriter and music producer and has been a voting member of Miami's Winter Music Conference. Charles is a practicing entertainment attorney and he teaches a club DJ class at Columbia College Chicago. Further, Charles DJ works his turn on display in the Smithsonian Institute National Museum of African American History and Culture. Charles is founder and executive director of Modern Music, Music Research and Archiving Foundation, charity which studies and archives dance music from 1970 to present day. Items from the foundation's archive are also currently on display in the Smithsonian as well. Charles so, um, our last person was very um, modest with his history. And I've known him for a long, long time. Long time. So, Craig Alexander is, he's just amazing. But I'll read his, his bio that he is posted, and we'll learn about him more about him. Craig Alexander has been a staple in Chicago house music for 36 years. He's played alongside everyone from Glenn Underground, Paul Johnson, and DJ Rush to Little Lewis and Thomas Bangalter. His musical journey has taken him to several places, including France, Switzerland, and Germany, to name a few. Craig Alexander, Hail Francis.
said, I, I graduated from Kimberly the last year was considered to be Kimberly High School. Um, Kimberly then went over to the Magnet School, Kimberly Academy type of deal, I believe in 1981. Um, so I was there from 76 to 80. Um, and when I was in Kimberly, when I actually went to Kimberly, we, did, we had some of the biggest dances and soccer and things of that sort. During the time that I was going to Kimberly, Jesse Saunders probably um, was, was the one that held down a residency as the DJ for all of the parties that were, were done at Kimberly. Um, during that time, I didn't even like dance music. I didn't like disco. Um, I was one of those disco sucks people, and I actually thought that the um, disco demolition was pretty cool. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is how my turnaround came. Um, I was what you call um, a stepper. I was a thumper. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why <laughs> Kurt knows is because, really, I, I, I give credit to Steve Perlin for introducing me to um, DJ, um, which he actually did. But my earliest meeting of anybody in the community was with Kurt Townsend. Because I used to go to a. I didn't hear that on her bio. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I never put it on the bio. You didn't make the cut. Um, <laughs> but I was, I, was, I was totally thugged out. And you know, Chicago, we have a history of what's called stepping that's done nothing but in Chicago. And um, I used to go to this place called The Dungeon on the south side of Chicago. And got snowed in at the dungeon, wasn't supposed to be there, snuck out the house, 16 years old, met Kurt. He used to set up parties all around the city. He, he and his, and his, was it Walla Walla Sounds? Was it Walla Walla? What was it? CDH? What was it called? What was it called? <laughs> audio special. Audio special, okay, audio special. And I need to ride home because we were stuck because the buses got stopped. And Kurt told me he could give me a ride home. But I had to help him break down the equipment. Ah. And that's what I did. And that's how I got back home and stuff back in the house. And Kurt and I, shortly after that, started dating. And we were boyfriend and girlfriend for three, maybe four years? Uh, about three weeks. <laughs> Craig was one of the DJs at um, uh, Hills Franciscan, 
along with some of the other guys um, that I knew. And he also was uh, a became a member of the DJs from what would later become um, a conglomerate of a mixture of high schools um, uh, club naked. So I just want to um, hear a little of your story uh, for a couple of minutes, Greg Alexander, and introduce us to your time on the scene. Thank you. 
and um, it was a situation that spawned a lot of things. Like I did the first all female DJ band with uh, Celeste. Uh, uh, DJ I can of that I had to have some kind of effect on their career. I mean, I can go down the list from Steve Poindexter, John Wayne, Terry Hunter, Ferris. Ferris. Uh, I mean, I can, I can keep going forever yeah. where, you know, we provided a, a, a place for a, a lot of different guys to come in and, and, and get there and grind their axes and, and, and get their starts. And, and then other people come play, like Frankie play, and Ron Harvey play there, and uh, Chippy, and then, then when the house music uh, commercialized, commercialization started, you know, all of them would come there and perform. Chippy would just perform. Uh, Steve, you know, JM Silk, uh, you know, it, it goes on and on. We didn't have so, a show, I didn't think there was a show with So, and, and, and the key to it for me was uh, helping my alma mater, which did a lot for me. Uh, you know, they didn't have to do what they did for me. They gave me my first big contract in 1977. I mean, and a lot of older guys that were up here earlier, they would tell you, you know, when you DJ, you, you do like $50 for four hours and maybe $10 an hour and <laughs> And uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, you know, it, 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 it wasn't it wasn't paying a whole lot of money back in the early seventies, like seventy four, seventy five. And uh, once they saw how I was building up everything, and they came and gave me one, the lifetime contract, and uh, and the first contract was like five hundred dollars a night and ten percent of the door. So that was humongous. My my actual. Uh, <laughs> One the, the teacher who taught uh, economics.